Hey, this is Zach with ZachMakesGames.com, here with another little pet project I've been working on. You might recognize this as Conway's Game of Life. And if you don't know what Conway's Game of Life is, pause this video and go look it up, because I'm not going to explain the rules or what it really is, because I don't really know. I know the rules, but I'm not really sure what it actually is kind of supposed to be, other than some sort of simulation that's supposed to simulate cellular life. I got recommended a video about Conway's Game of Life on YouTube and started following the rabbit hole down to some pretty interesting things. Some of the stuff people have done in this are just kind of astounding. I've seen computers done in this. I've even seen the Game of Life simulated in the Game of Life. So it's a pretty interesting system. And I thought, it's interesting, but it's simple enough. I think I'll try and tackle it and see what I can come up with. And what you're looking at is the result. Now this is the result of a couple of days of work. Uh, not all day, I've spent you know an hour or so. And I've gone through a couple of revisions. So it's um, pretty, pretty robust. And it's actually pretty complicated under the hood because I set up some systems that would allow me to expand it in the future if I wanted to. And I also wanted to test some of my previous knowledge and some of my skills to see if I could pull it off in a certain way. So right off the bat, you can see that there is this nice little simulation that's running. It's creating what they call gliders. This is a pretty popular pattern used by people creating systems in the game of life, and I thought it'd be a great way to demonstrate what it can do. So I'll just kind of go through some of the controls and what happens and why. I've got the start button, starts the simulation, stop button, stops the simulation, or essentially it pauses it. The step button steps you through one step at a time. The clear array actually clears the whole board. I've got this nice little load test pattern button. That puts that pattern back in because that's a pain in the butt to try and put in right now. And then I've got these two controls that control how you set the board. So if you click on the board, you can actually set a pixel, which sets a cell in the game of life. So if I set these and then I play it again, you can see it does all kinds of weird stuff. And if I stop it and I clear the array, and just create some sort of kind of random pattern. There's some patterns that do some pretty interesting things, but I like to just kind of fill the board with random bits and see what happens because sometimes it will die off right away and sometimes it will just keep going. So it's really interesting to watch. So there we go, we had a simple pattern. And then the clear pixel button allows me to clear pixels, essentially erase them, and then set pixel allows me to set them back in. I've also got a nice little slider to control the speed so you can slow it down. Uh, basically it's just putting in a delay between frame processing to allow you to see what's going on a little slower. Also, if you wanted to try and capture one specific frame of a pattern, you can turn the speed down. But if you just want to see it play out really, really fast, you can crank that speed up and it works very, very quickly. I've got this little label down here that shows you the generation number that you're on. It's basically how many frames have been processed and then a little label down here to tell you if the simulation is actually running because this is multi-threaded. So when I set this up originally, I had planned to just do one thread. One thread works great for small board dimensions. This is a 64 by 64 board, so doing it iterating over 64 times 64 doesn't take a whole lot of time, especially because the calculations you have to perform at each cell are pretty minuscule. But I wasn't really satisfied with single thread execution because I know that if I ever wanted to expand this in the future to a board that was say 10,000 by 10,000, that's a, a little bit more time you gotta spend processing. And I wanted to kinda test myself to see if I could do that. Not necessarily to actually create a 10,000 by 10,000 board because the pixels would be tiny and trying to zoom in would be a nightmare, but I wanted to see if I could set it up so that if I ever got there, I had a robust kind of framework to work on and single threaded execution just wasn't going to do it. So originally my thought was, well, hey, I'll cut the array up into slices and feed each slice into a separate thread and I'll have a variable number of threads that I can run the the work segments on. So what I did was I set it up so that every frame I would create 
a certain number of threads. Eight is the kind of golden number because it's a because it's 64, and each thread would do its piece and then die. And then I would just gather the results of every thread's work, put it together, show the image, and then I do that again. And that works, but the the system calls implemented used a lot of time and that put in a lot of time overhead between the frames and the simulation would stutter really really bad it would slow down sometimes it would speed up really quick it just made it really really unstable and i knew that it was going to be those system calls and in, in doing the multi-threading there's no way to get around at least one system call per thread but i figured why don't I reduce it down to one system call per thread and actually create a batch job where all the threads stay alive. They don't die. They keep running and they just pick out the piece of the work that they need to do from a queue. And originally when I was thinking about this, I was like, well, I'll use locks. I'll lock down the queue. I'll put the data into it. I'll unlock the queue and then each thread will try and grab the piece of the data. But I knew I had to do a little bit extra than that because I needed to lock the queue specifically for the main thread when the queue was empty, but I needed to make sure that the other threads didn't lock it too soon. So I played around with a couple different locks, <clears throat> but it got kind of messy, and I wasn't super happy with that implementation. I could sit down and write it out on paper and figure out exactly the locking order to, to make that work, but I was remembering back to my parallel programming class for a project that we did that was very, very similar to this, although not the game of life. It was a simulation for simulating kind of an environment that had multiple agents, we called it, within it. So we were doing like deer, and we had bear and we had like fish in the water and then we had like grass and grain and then what do we do is every every frame basically we would have those systems interact in a way and then calculate the results so we would simulate kind of an ecosystem and that's really what this is it's simulating an ecosystem but what we used instead of mutex locks were barriers and the barriers for that worked really really well because there was a set order that things needed to be executed in and a set work chunk that needed to be done between those barriers. And I thought that's perfect because I know exactly the work that's going on. I know exactly the steps that need to be taken. A barrier would work perfect for this. For another system where you need to dispatch jobs that you don't really know how long it's gonna take and the order doesn't necessarily matter, barriers probably wouldn't work too well, but for this they work great. So all I have to do is set up three barriers, that's all it takes. I have a barrier for the preparation phase, a barrier for the work phase, and a barrier for the process phase. And then all I have to do is call uh, barrier dot signal and wait, I think it is for C sharp. And then all of the threads will wait at that barrier and it works great. So now all I have to do is in the main control thread, the first thing it does is it spawns the worker threads, gives them the process they should run on and then they go off and then they wait for their barriers and they wait for their work. And then after that, I set up the work orders. I queue them onto the work queue and then I pass that preparation barrier. And then I just wait for the workers to hit their work barrier. Once the workers are all done, the wait barrier or the work barrier passes. Then I process the data back on the main thread and then the process barrier passes and it just keeps going over and over again. And during the process data, that's when I'm updating the bitmap on the, the form and displaying it. <clears throat> so it works great. I'm really happy with this. It's very robust. It solved a lot of the issues with the system calls. I don't have a whole lot of stuttering. You can see if I crank that speed up, it looks pretty uniform. You don't really see a whole lot of stuttering. There's no slowdowns. It just goes and it goes. And if I stop it, you can actually see what's going on in the log. So here's the first phase where I set up the work order. Each thread then past that barrier collects its data. And I am using at least one lock here. And that lock is to allow the threads to only gain one work item off of the queue and not gain duplicates. So I'm actually calculating the whole thing correctly. So they gain their lock, they gain their work order, 
they release the lock, they do their work, and then they hit the barrier. Then you can see the main thread here is waiting for its work to finish. These all finishes, and then I process the data. That's all there is to it. This is a really fun little project. Took me well, two hours maybe to implement the the base kind of the form and the single threaded execution. I'd been out of C sharp for a little while, so getting back into C sharp takes a little bit of of remembering. Um, and then I spent a couple hours working on the threading. Most of that time was spent spinning on the locks until I remembered how to do barriers. And then I set it up with barriers and it works great. I will go ahead and post this on my GitHub and I will make a post on my portfolio too. So if you wanna see a more thorough write up and actually check out the source code, watch for this to go up on my GitHub and you can check it out. So thanks for watching and I will catch you next time.